the space elevator, known by various names such as the space bridge, star ladder, or orbital lift, has been a popular theme in science fiction. It is a proposed transportation system that could enable travel between a planet's surface and space. The primary component of this system is a cable tethered to the surface and extending up into space. However, due to the enormous weight, an Earth-based space elevator cannot be constructed as a tall tower supported from below an alternative design proposes a cable tethered to a counterweight in space beyond geostationary orbit, with the upward centrifugal force holding it under tension and stationary over a single position on Earth. Climbers could then travel up and down the tether by mechanical means, releasing cargo to and from orbit while the concept of a tower reaching geosynchronous orbit was first conceived in 1895. Most modern ideas for space elevators have focused on purely tensile structures. The available materials are not yet strong and light enough to make an Earth space elevator practical, but future advancements in materials such as carbon nanotubes could make it possible. Meanwhile, the concept is also applicable to other celestial bodies with weaker gravity like the Moon or Mars, where currently available materials like Kevlar could be practical. The story discusses the idea of a space elevator, a seemingly impossible task as no material could withstand the compressive strength required to support its own weight. In 1959, engineer Yuri Artsutinov suggested an innovative proposal, using a geostationary satellite as the base from which to deploy the structure downward with a cable, kept constantly over the same spot on Earth by a counterweight extended from the satellite he also suggested tapering the cable's thickness to keep the stress constant resulting in a thinner cable at ground level and thickest at geostationary orbit level. This idea was later reinvented by American engineers who named it a skyhook, later improved upon by scientist Jerome Pearson who suggested a cross-section area altitude profile that tapered to reduce weight per unit area of the cable and included disturbances like gravitational forces from the moon after the development of carbon nanotubes. Engineer David Smitherman proposed making the space elevator a reality by using the material's high strength a workshop was organized with scientists and engineers to discuss and compile plans for the project. Several competitions for relevant technologies have been organized by proponents to accelerate the development of the space elevator. The Elevator 2010 RoboGames Space Elevator Ribbon Climbing Competition and NASA's Centennial Challenges Program are among the competitions focusing on climbers, ribbons, and power beaming systems. In August 2011, the first European Space Elevator Challenge was held to establish a climber structure, while Liftport Group announced in 2005 a plan to build a carbon nanotube manufacturing plant to produce robust materials for various industries though their goal was to launch a space elevator in 2010. Liftport CEO Michael Lane admitted in April 2019 that little progress has been made. Elevator 2010 awarded $1 million in prize money in 2007 and announced an additional $4 million in funding for space elevator-related technologies over the next five years the Obayashi Corporation proposed building a space elevator by 2050 in 2012, while the International Academy of Astronautics published a feasibility assessment in 2013 that highlighted the need for specific strength to improve tether materials despite Google X's rapid evaluation R&D team beginning the design of a space elevator in 2014. They found that no manufacturer had yet produced a perfect carbon nanotube strand measuring longer than a meter. The story of space elevators has been a recurring theme in various science fiction novels throughout the years. In books such as The Fountains of Paradise by Arthur C. Clarke, The Web Between the Worlds by Charles Sheffield, Friday by Robert A. Heinlein, Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson, and Rainbow Mars by Larry Niven, space elevators are either built on Earth or Mars, allowing for easier transportation of resources and colonists David Gerald's Jumping Off the Planet explores the industrial applications of this technology, while Joan Slonkowski's The Highest Frontier depicts a biological version of Space elevators, constructed of self-healing cables of anthrax bacilli. But what exactly are space elevators? These elevators are supported by a cable that rotates along with the Earth's rotation, therefore providing upward centrifugal force that opposes the downward gravitational force, allowing objects attached to it to experience no weight. The balance of these two forces happens at geosynchronous equatorial orbit, GEO, creating the apparent gravitational field. 
with the potential development of macro-scale single crystal graphene, these elevators could become a reality. The theme of the story is the technical challenges involved in designing and building a space elevator. A key problem is the ability of the cable to hold up the weight of itself below any given point, with the greatest tension occurring at the point of geostationary orbit. The cable material must be strong enough to support its own weight from the surface up to 35,786 kilometers above the Earth's equator. To achieve the largest safety margin possible, the cable's cross-section area must be designed with consideration for factors such as space junk, stresses imposed by climbers and varied materials the desired safety factor can be divided by T to account for safety margin, with the taper ratio becoming very large unless the specific strength of the material used approaches 48 MPA forward slash KG slash M3. Various space elevator designs have been proposed for different planetary bodies, all of which include a base station, a cable, climbers, and a counterweight. The counterweight is held down by the cable while the cable is held up and taut by the counterweight, with climbers transporting cargo up and down the cable. The idea of a space elevator has been explored, and one of the key challenges is finding a material with high enough tensile strength to withstand the enormous weight it would need to support. The cable would need to carry its own weight, plus the weight of climbers, and the required strength would vary along its length. A material with a high tensile strength slash density ratio, such as carbon nanotubes or graphene ribbons, would be necessary to reach geosynchronous altitude without yielding however, the challenge remains in producing such materials on a macroscopic scale. Recently, diamond nanothreads have shown promise as a potential cable material, but further research is needed. The taper factor, the ratio between the cable's radius at geosynchronous altitude and at the Earth's surface, would also play a role in the design ultimately. The development of a space elevator would require the creation of new materials that meet the demanding specific strength requirement. The theme of the story is the potential for space elevators and the various factors that need to be considered when designing and operating them. One important consideration is the design of the climbers themselves which can vary greatly depending on the type of elevator. Some propose using pairs of rollers to hold planar ribbon cables in place, while others require optimal timing to minimize cable stress and oscillations lighter climbers could be sent up more frequently to increase throughput, but this would reduce the mass of each individual payload. As climbers ascend, they gain both altitude and horizontal speed through the Earth's rotation, which is taken from the planet's angular momentum however, the Coriolis force limits the speed at which climbers can move, as does the amount of available power and the need to prevent the cable from breaking. Energy transfer to climbers is also a significant issue that needs to be addressed. Overall, the success of space elevators will depend on careful planning and consideration of all these factors. The story discusses the concept of a space elevator and the potential methods for powering the climber. The use of nuclear and solar energy are explored, with power beaming through wireless energy transfer being the most likely method. The efficiency of the photovoltaic array on the climber is critical. However, there is a need to dissipate in used energy, which adds to the weight. The idea of extending the cable and adding a second cable that uses carbon nanotubes for conductivity is presented other topics covered include constructing a space dock or elevator on other planets, asteroids, and moons, and using Phobos as a resource for future colonization on Mars. The concept of using the moon as a location for a lunar space elevator has gained traction due to the specific strength requirements being low enough to utilize currently available materials. Although the moon's slow rotation prevents an elevator from being supported by centrifugal force, it is possible to construct an elevator through Lagrangian points using differential gravity forces. Depending on the chosen apex anchor mass, elevators can be constructed on either the near or far side of the moon using existing engineering materials. Furthermore, the use of cables to eject materials from rapidly spinning asteroids or moons for power generation has been suggested. While constructing a space elevator would require advances in engineering and technology, the cost would decrease significantly after the first one is built past concepts required cable manufacturing in space using an asteroid or near-Earth object, which necessitated a large pre-existing spacefaring infrastructure for maneuvering. 
the construction of a space elevator involves anchoring a cable to the Earth's surface and elevating its center of mass through the addition of mass or by paying out more cable. A minimum size initial seed cable is placed using conventional rockets, which is then widened by attaching more cable to it. The resulting cable can lift up to 20 tons per climber, reducing the cost of sending materials into orbit dramatically however, a space elevator poses navigational hazards and requires the cable to maneuver out of the way of space debris. The International Space Elevator Consortium ISEC, promotes the development and operation of a space elevator to reduce the cost of space activities, and coordinates with other major societies focusing on space elevators The first country to deploy a space elevator enjoys a 95% cost advantage and potentially controls all space activities. The story centers around a revolutionary technology that could bring objects to higher orbit without the use of rockets. This concept was first imagined by Tsiolkovsky as a compression structure but many variations have since been suggested. One idea combines a Tsiolkovsky tower with a space elevator cable to reach geostationary orbit. Others propose using tall compressive towers to reduce demands on launch vehicles, elevating the vehicle up the tower and launching it from the top. Other non-rocket space launch concepts include an orbital ring, a pneumatic space tower, a space fountain, a launch loop, a skyhook, a space tether, and a buoyant space shaft. The emphasis is on the groundbreaking potential of this technology and the imaginative solutions being developed to harness it.